So this session is related to experimental technique exercise three, uh, which is a weekly homework as well. In the first question, which is from paper four, the structure question, a list of techniques used to separate mixture is given below. So you can have a chromatography, crystallization, diffusion, evaporation, filtration, fractional distillation, and simple distillation. From the list, choose the most suitable technique to separate the following. If we need water from seawater, basically seawater is a salt solution. So if we, want, if we need water from seawater, then which technique we will use? We'll use simple distillation. We want to separate helium from a mixture of helium and methane. So if you want to separate two or more gases because different gases have different rate of diffusion. So here we can write diffusion or we can also use fractional distillation. So both are acceptable as in the option we have both diffusion and fraction distillation. So any one of them we can write. If you want to separate two or more miscible liquids or two or more gases which are mixed together, we can use diffusion is specifically for gases and fraction distillation if they are miscible they mix with each other so first we convert the gas into liquid and then separate them on the basis of the boiling point ethanol from mixture of ethanol and propanol so two alcohols are there they are completely mixed together as they are both liquid so whenever two or more miscible liquids are there so what we can use we can use fractional distillation Iron fillings from mixture of iron filling and water. So iron filling means small pieces of iron. So iron is insoluble as you add iron metal to water. Iron does not dissolve in water. So if you have insoluble solid, so which technique you can use? You can use filtration. And amino acids, amino acids are colorless liquids. So for amino acids, colors, dyes, food colors what we use we use chromatography is it clear uh, question one anyone having a doubt so water from sea water we use simple distillation mixture of gases we use diffusion of fraction distillation Alcohols are mixed together, we use fraction distillation. Iron fillings are insoluble in water, so we can filter them out. And a mixture of amino acids, so we can use chromatography. Then in question two, they're asking, uh, what is meant by a term fraction distillation? So basically, you have to write the definition of a fraction distillation. So fraction distillation is, is simply separating the substances on the basis of boiling point. So separating two or more miscible substances on the basis of boiling point this technique is known as fractional distillation in question three a list of technique used to separate the mixture is given below the filtration diffusion fraction distillation simple distillation crystallization and chromatography from the list choose the most suitable technique a technique may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So it's not necessary that all of them will be the answer. So you can use them one, more than once, or not at all. So butane from a mixture of propane and butane. So you have two or basically both are the gases. So when we have gases, the technique which we can use, we can use diffusion or we can use fractional distillation. 
when two or more miscible substances are there we use fraction distillation or how diffusion can be used because when two gases have different masses as there are different gases so they will diffuse at a different rate so diffusion is not 100% accurate but it can be used as the two gases will have different masses so they will diffuse at a different rate so what we can do we can put a barrier like we have a container the container is a porous container porous means like it is having small holes and the gas is inside the mixture of a gas so which gas will come out first the gas which is lighter will come out first so and the gas which is heavier will remain in the container for a longer period of a time so this technique is called diffusion but it's not 100% accurate some of the heavy gas will also come out but it can be used oxygen from liquid air so if we are separating oxygen from liquid air again the mixture of gases and here we have a liquid air so that's why we cannot mention diffusion because diffusion is only valid for gases but fractional distillation when a gas is converted into liquid and then we separate on the boiling basis of boiling point so we call that as a fractional distillation water from aqueous magnesium sulfate so we need water from salt solution when we need water from the salt solution so the technique which we can use that is called simple distillation potassium chloride from aqueous potassium chloride like you have a salt solution you have a salt dissolved because aqueous potassium chloride means a salt solution so you have a salt solution and you want salt from this so what you can do you can use evaporation or crystallization so only crystallization is mentioned evaporation is not there as an option so we can mention here crystallization fractional distillation abdullah is used normally for two or more miscible liquids but here you have water and the salt salt is solid which is dissolved and you need water out from that that's why it is simple distillation so if you want a liquid from a solution a salt solution then it is a simple distillation a silver chloride from a mixture of silver chloride and water so as we discuss silver uh, most chlorides are soluble except silver mercury and lead so this is insoluble so this will be solid so right now we don't have a salt solution basically what we have we have a container which is filled with water and we have a solid silver chloride So we have the solid silver chloride too <coughs> and we want to separate it from the water so what we can use we can use filtration and glucose from a mixture of glucose and maltose <coughs> so for identifying uh, if it is a dissolved one you can mention chromatography or you can mention if it's a solution normally the correct answer is chromatography but other one chromatography in that sense that you have a sample or a mixture of a dissolved sample of glucose and maltose so you in that case you can use chromatography is it clear question 3 anyone having a doubt any question or a doubt in 3 yes abdullah 
sir in the uh, hmm. can't we use the evaporation process yes we can use evaporation but in the list they did not mention evaporation because in the question they mentioned from the list choose the most suitable so in the list evaporation is not there otherwise yes you can mention evaporation okay sir thank you then moving on to question 4 The following techniques are used to separate the mixture: simple distillation (A), A is simple distillation; B is fraction distillation; C is chromatography; D is filtration; E is evaporation; and F is diffusion. From the list, most suitable technique: methane from mixture of gases, methane and ethane. So when you have gases, so you can write diffusion. So diffusion is denoted by D. You don't have to write the name. you just have to select a letter for this so diffusion is d or it can be fraction distillation so it can be b so both are possible but you don't have to write both of them any one of them the diffusion is f sorry i diffusion is f and fraction distillation is b so it can be f or it can be b water from aqueous magnesium sulfate so you need water from a salt solution aqueous means salt solution so if you need water we can use simple distillation that is denoted by letter a a mixture of amino acids so amino acids a colorless liquid so we use chromatography iron filling which are insoluble in water so we can use filtration so d zinc sulfate crystals from aqueous zinc sulfate so we need salt from solution so when we need salt from the solution so we can use crystallization or evaporation but here there is no option of crystallization so evaporation is denoted by op uh, option e hexane from a mixture of liquid hexane and octane two or more miscible liquids are there so what we can use we can use fractional distillation is it clear question 4 Abdullah you have any question Abdullah Safras Yes sir can you explain number E hmm zinc sulfate from aqueous zinc sulfate what is the meaning it, it means you have a salt solution you have a salt zinc sulfate dissolve in water so you have a salt solution and i want salt from this so if i have a dissolved salt in water and i only need salt from this so what i can do i can either evaporate means i can supply heat energy until all of the water will escape and what we are left behind when all of the water escape so we are left behind with the salt that's called evaporation is it clear yes sir in question 1 related to alternative to practical atp a fake bank note can be investigated by dissolving the ink of the paper so there is a fake bank note and we can investigate uh, its uh, ink by dissolving in water you are provided with four different inks so there are four different inks from four different criminals so four different criminals you have a sample of four different ink describe an experiment to show which one of these inks is the same as the ink from the bank note and you can use a label diagram to help your answer so simply what we will do i will write the answer but first explanation so what we'll do we'll use a chromatography and how we carry out this chromatography so this is a chromatogram which we will take then we will draw the origin with pencil here we will place ink from the bank note i am writing bn so ink from the bank note that is bn then we will take and we have four uh, inks from different four different criminals so example from criminal 1 we have c1 criminal 2 c2 criminal 3 we have ink 3 and criminal 4 we'll have c4 then we will use a suitable solvent which can dissolve these inks 
so as the chromatogram will absorb the solvent the solvent will rise on the chromatogram how we can identify that which uh, criminal is having the banknote ink so the one which matches with the like the, this is a spot of ink from criminal 1 criminal 2 criminal 3 and criminal 4 so which spot matches with the bank noting so this is a spot of a bank note and this is a spot from criminal 3 so it means it matches with criminal 3 so it means this bank note ink belongs to criminal 3 yeah it is very important you draw the diagram so that it will clear the if you miss anything in the question it will clear complete the answer that's a reason why you should always draw so basically but you don't have to say which criminal is having you just have to outline the experiment that how it can be done so what we will do so first thing we will use chromatography and then we will uh, draw the origin with pencil Then we will place uh, ink from banknote. And inks from different criminals. And then what we will do, we will use a suitable solvent here. Like you can mention water. Then we'll compare the height. Of ink from banknote. With the criminal samples. The one which rise with same uh, rise to same height. belongs to the criminal so we can check the height the position compare and we can identify that which one belongs to that criminal is it clear the experiment so we have like there's a fake banknote not original banknote and there are sample of inks from four, four different criminals so what we did we take a ink from the uh, fake banknote and we took the ink from four different criminals and we carry out a chromatography and we check the height through which the ink from the banknote and ink from the different criminal rise the one which matches or rises to the same height it means that belongs to so this fake ink or fake banknote belongs to criminal three in this example, but you don't have to mention a specific criminal. You just have to outline the experiment. Is it clear? To everyone. So the next question, you can mention RF value, you can mention like compare
So you can mention the RF value as well, like measure the RF value from the banknote and compare with the RF value of the criminals. You can mention that as well. So both ways it is right. Another question in question two leaves are uh, leaves from tree containing a mixture of colored pigments like uh, leaves having different colors and which are not soluble in water. So we cannot dissolve them in water. A student was given these two instruction to investigate the pigments in the leaf. So first instruction is crush some leaves to extract the color pigment. So first thing he want to crush and then extract the color and use the liquid extract to find the number of colored pigments. So what, uh, you have to write the answer for first one. What would the student need in order to effectively carry out instruction one? So how he can crush them and extract the color. So we can use mortar and pestle to crush the leaves. And then we will boil with alcohol because it is not water soluble. So we can boil in alcohol to extract the color. And then we will filter to remove insoluble particles. Then how we can uh, identify how many colored pigments are there. So for that purpose, we can use chromatography. Then uh, draw origin with pencil. Then use suitable solvent, not water. You cannot mention water. As I mentioned, it is insoluble in water. Then. Uh, Wait for solvent to rise. Then identify number of spots. On chromatogram to know number of colored pigments. in green leaves. Is it clear? So first instruction, we use mortar and pestle to crush it and then we boil in alcohol. Why we boil in alcohol, not in water? Because I mentioned it is not soluble in water. So we boil in alcohol, then we filter. So that was a colored extract which we obtained. And then that colored extract we place on the chromatogram. We draw the origin with pencil and we identify number of spots. Then, like example, if two spots are there, it means it contains two pigments, two colors, colored pigments. If it is having three spots, then it is three color pigments. If it is one spot, and it means it is only one color. Is it clear? Question two. And moving on to question three. So they mentioned there is E110 is a sunset yellow. So it's basically it's a food color E110. You can find different types of food color. And these are actually the codes for the food colors. Um, you can find different food colors having different numbering. So E110 is a, basically a sunset yellow. 
outline a method you could use to show the presence of E110 in a food coloring. So there's a food coloring and you want to show that it contain E110. A space has been left if you want to draw a diagram to help your answer, the, help you answer the question. So you can draw a diagram if you want to help you uh, answer the question. So what we will do, we can do in two manners. We can uh, draw the, take a chromatogram, draw the origin with pencil, and then we will place a food color. So food color I'm writing like FC. And then we will take E110, the color, the actual E110. We want to outline a method to show the presence of E110 in a food coloring. So food coloring contain E110. So how we can work out? So we'll use a suitable solvent. So when you use a suitable solvent, the chromatogram will soak up the solvent and the solvent will rise on the chromatogram. So if the spot from the food coloring and spot from E110, they rises to the same height or they have the, or we can measure the RF value for both. If they have the same RF value, it means the food coloring contain E110. So the answer for this, like writing in words, So we'll use chromatography. Then we'll draw the origin with pencil. Then we'll place food color and E110. We'll use a suitable solvent. Uh, when you mention in exam, don't mention use suitable solvent. You will mention the name of the solvent, like use suitable solvent example. Here we are using water. Then wait for solvent to rise. Then measure the RF value. or compare the height from food color and spot uh, for E110. If they rise to same height, or it having a same RF value, it means that the food color contain E110. Is it clear uh, this question three? Any doubt or a question? So this was exercise three, which was a weekly homework related to experimental techniques.